everyone, it's me, Sam B. Unfortunately, the DNC declined to have a presidential debate on the very real, very serious topic of climate change. Fortunately, we've put together some of our top pieces on the topic from over the years. So take a look, unless you're currently in a global warming-induced blackout, in which case, turn this off. Oh my God, save your battery. Welcome to Shriller, the meditation app for ladies whose insides are screaming. It's me. Relax, your mind is a peaceful pond. Unlike many ponds poisoned with fracking runoff and brimming with dead lizards. Oh my God. Put me back in. Oh, oh. Picture a sea that rises and rises and, oh no, it's now a tsunami that heads towards your village and you do nothing. No! The earth will not be ignored, Samantha. Oh. Yeah, meditate on that. Okay, fine. I will do a climate change episode. Actually, that's good enough for me, but not for my sitar player. My wife is an endangered bird. <laughs> I love you! This week, we are taking a break from talking about the president attacking gold star families and instead talking about something else, our planet constantly attacking us in every way imaginable. This summer of extreme weather has ravaged lives across the U.S. High winds and high temperatures fueling three fires near Spokane. More than one million acres have burned in Montana. Two category five hurricanes passing through Puerto Rico. And as the fires rage on, it's still too early to know the full extent of the damage to California. California's multi-billion dollar wine industry, but many wine enthusiasts are of course concerned. No, not the wine! <laughs> Who knew fire could be so cruel? But despite all these disasters, climate change is never the top story. Look, I get it. Who has time to read a thoughtful Times explainer about hurricanes when you yourself are on fire? <laughs> but we can't avoid the subject any longer. 2017 is the first year in recorded history when the U.S. was hit by three Category 4 hurricanes. Even a complete idiot could see there's something unprecedented going on here. They were among the biggest we've ever seen, with the second one being even worse. I mean. The second one hit Puerto Rico as a Category 5. I don't believe anybody's ever seen that happen before. For once, he's right that something is the biggest you've ever seen. Thanks, Orange L. Roker. So what will make strong hurricanes more and more frequent? According to our government, the answer is none of your fucking business. Stop asking so many questions. The EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt responded to a question from CNN about this by saying, and I, I quote Mr. Pruitt, to have any kind of focus on the cause and effect of the storm versus helping people or actually facing the effect of the storm is misplaced. To use time and effort to address it at this point is very, very insensitive to the people in Florida. Well, if we can't talk about climate change, I guess it's finally time to have that gun control conversation we've been putting off, right? I mean, maybe if there is a hurricane made of guns, we'll finally get to have both of those talks. Either that or it'll get elected governor of Florida. Look, <laughs> scientists aren't saying climate change caused these disasters, but they do think it made them considerably worse. Warmer temperatures raise sea levels, warmer oceans strengthen hurricanes, and warmer air holds more moisture, so when it rains, it rains hard. Which is great news for sexy movie posters, but bad news <laughs> for everything else. Oh, nothing sexier than a couple of damp Canadians storm humping. <laughs> Meanwhile, California is experiencing one of its worst fire seasons ever. Mandatory evacuations underway for more than 1,300 people. It was a tornado of embers going through here. This fire was moving quickly, more than a football field every three to four seconds. Okay, but the important question is, did the wildfires kneel on those football fields? Look, again, it's not that climate change caused those fires, but I don't have to be Ms. Frizzle to know that hot, dry temperatures help things burn. I don't have to be, but I can for the right lover. <laughs> Climate change is hurting us in subtler ways, too. Warmer temperatures have contributed to the spread of Lyme disease. Ticks can reproduce and spread farther, so the number of cases has tripled since the 1990s. Look, if climate change had to be great for some animal, why couldn't it be puppies? The only thing they spread is joy and rabies. <laughs> Look, I get it. 
It's hard to remember that climate change is slowly destroying the world, maybe because it doesn't have a Twitter account to remind us of our mortality every five minutes. But the planet is getting warmer. There's no part of our country that didn't face the effects of that this year. Climate change isn't some far off threat in the distant future like Beyonce aging. It is upon us like Billy Crystal turning back into a baby. This year, six million Americans were ordered to evacuate in Florida because of Hurricane Irma, and a quarter million around the country are displaced long term. We know how much Americans hate refugees. Wait till they have to deal with refugees from Mississippi. Our descendants will look back on the summer of 2017 as the time we stopped ignoring that climate change was coming and started ignoring that it had arrived. Despite tonight's journey through the wide world of worldwide catastrophe, climate change isn't quite as high on our nation's list of fears as you would hope. There's a new poll that shows Americans are more afraid of clowns than climate change. God damn it, I knew Al Gore's movie should have added a Pennywise cameo. But it is true. In fact, over half of Americans believe humans are not responsible for global warming. Then again, if what a majority of Americans thought mattered, there wouldn't be a terrifying clown in the White House in the first place. Hey, uh, but whatever. While reason may not be enough to alarm Americans about climate change, I sat down with an expert who knows what could. My name is Margie Kerr, and I'm a sociologist who studies fear. So you're a fear doctor. Yeah. I guess that explains why we're doing this interview in one of my living nightmares. <laughs> Could we use fear to make people acknowledge that climate change is real? While climate change is so diffuse and abstract, and people are like, well, what is it? Uh, if we can make people experience it in their body too and say, okay, this is climate change, this is the consequence, I'm in danger. All of our attention is focused on our body, on being ready to run or uh, fight. What was that? Oh, that was cold. Taking an abstract idea and making it horrifyingly corporeal? Like when Trump took old timey racism and turned it into an attorney general. But has anyone tried this before? There's the history of, of hell houses, which really were ushered in with Jerry Falwell back in the, the 60s and 70s. Really graphic scenes of an abortion or of what happens if you're gay. AIDS, you fool! <laughs> Terrifying people by saying they will burn in hell. That's right, religious zealots perfected fear. Maybe we can steal the methods of these totally real things that still exist today, you know, with less assholery. I needed some real life volunteers with their own nuanced ideas about the planet's complicated ecosystem. This climate has been changing since the inception of the planet. Climate change, it's all a fairy tale. It's just all made up. To me, it's Mother Earth. Back in the BC time, those people ran around in loincloths. Then it got colder. Now it's getting warmer, so maybe things just circle around. They talk about these, these cows are releasing this methane gas. I mean, is there enough to release some kind of anal gas that's gonna destroy the Earth? It's just all nutty to me. Excuse me, did you just say anal gas? Yeah, anal gas. Sir, you are hired. So we partnered with one of the biggest haunted houses in the country, Terror Behind the Walls at Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia, to build a climate change hell house to scare the denial right out of them. Oh, that's me. Welcome to the distant future of 50 years from now. Humans destroyed the planet and now everything you love is dead and those that are left are killing each other over the remaining resources. Oh man! Give me your canned core! Give it to me! Give it to me! But how did we get here? Go! Massive droughts made food so scarce that people had to rely on the only protein available. I don't know where I'm going! Oh, oh an appetite. As society broke down, the only species to flourish was the NGO worker. Give a moment for balding rainforest. Which could survive for months on a single donation. What about swim lessons for giraffes? Elevated sea levels forced millions from their homes. Oh, I can't tell what Polka's saying. Can I stay with you? With 
Rising temperatures, superstorms became the norm. Plague victims spread ancient diseases that were released from melting Arctic ice. And then, their oceans died. I'm the last normal. That wasn't the worst of it. The worst were the liberals. Oh, we got John Hodge, man. Yes, Sam. And now my reading of the transcript of Al Gore's 2016 TED Talk. I was excited to be a part of the dream. But then I found out I'm reading off the nightmare section. Audience laughs here. And certainly there are things about the climate crisis that... The horror. The horror. Besides the fear that I might throw up on you. What was the scariest part? The falling wall was amazing. Falling wall. Oh, those roaches, man, those Terrifying. roaches. Roaches. <laughs> was anyone's mind changed about climate change? Oh, you. What was it that changed your mind? Listening to other people and weighing their opinions okay. and seeing who I really thought was credible. So being in a group of climate change deniers, yes. you didn't find any of these people credible. Yes. I guess there is an emotion more motivating than fear. I don't think they're belching. I think they're releasing anal gas, I think. The shame of being caught with the wrong peer group. Last week, Syria joined the Paris Climate Accord, leaving America the only country not signed on after Trump pulled out. Damn it, if you were gonna pull out of something, why couldn't it have been five seconds before you made an Eric? <laughs> Many of Trump supporters doubt climate science too, even those who are feeling its effects in their own backyards. Alana Harkin took a voyage to meet them. Now you see this island here? This wasn't an island, this was all connected. So you can see within a year's time how much land disappeared. Do you think that's because the sea level was rising? Nope, it's because of erosion. I really like James Eskridge, the mayor of Tangier Island, and I'm totally not annoying him. Yeah, chip away at you. Chip, 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 chip. Down here, they call him Uker, and all day I've been trying to convince him that global warming is real. I don't believe it. A tiny speck in Chesapeake Bay, Tangier is home to a small and very religious community of hardy crabbers. It's so lovely that charming AF Magazine recently awarded it a full 10 AFs. Tragically, Tangier is rapidly disappearing into the Chesapeake because of sea level rise. Erosion, not sea level rise. No, sea level rise caused by global warming. That's the biggest oh, hoax ever was. No! Climate change is real. No way, honey. You could never change my mind. That's because as evangelicals, they're among those Americans least likely to believe in climate change, as well as some other things. Let me ask you a question. Yes. <laughs> honest, be honest with me. Yeah. Do you think you evolved from an ape? I believe in um, evolution, yes. Uh. Well, we'll, we'll put you on the prior list. <laughs> you can see all this standing water here. As the sea level has come up, it's converting into swamp. David Schulte is a scientist with the Army Corps of Engineers and world's strongest Jimmy Buffett fan. He studied the island for 15 years. The majority of them just simply cannot accept that climate change is a real problem out here. They attribute it to all to erosion. Erosion that islanders say can be solved with a seawall. A seawall would protect us from whatever's going on. A wall will help with wave erosion, but it won't help as sea levels continue to rise. It's like acknowledging you have to escape from Billy Zane while ignoring some larger issues. This is sort of a canary in the coal mine situation. This is happening in a lot of areas in the United States and it's going to get worse. You've been here for 15 years explaining to these people how climate change works. Why aren't you so bad at it? Belief systems trump facts a lot. So how can you have a respectful conversation about climate change? If I brought Al Gore here, would My that God, convince- I don't want that trash here. <laughs> Make sure you put that statement on that camera. Trash. I don't want you, Al Gore. Okay, that's the worst way. First, you have to prepare. And I'm not just talking about the bottle of wine I buried on the beach because they don't sell alcohol here. Prepare by speaking with Catherine Hayhoe. God gave us responsibility over our planet. 
Catherine is a climate scientist who knows how to speak to evangelical Christians because she is one herself. Just saying, oh, God will take care of it or it doesn't matter is actually a profoundly unchristian perspective. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible it says, God will destroy those who destroy the earth. What's your advice to me? What is, what is step one? I'm in Tangier <laughs> Island. The first way to connect is to listen. Rather than coming in saying, I know, I'm going to tell you, you listen to me, the place to start is by sharing from the heart what is it that we have in common. Don't start a conversation by being a dick. Exactly. Share from the heart and don't be a dick? I can do both of those. I love crabs. I'm assuming you like crabs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you like a yoga or are you like a Pilates guy? I'm more yoga. I'm done Pilates. Mm, no. Um, <laughs> I'm just Neither. work. We both start our day really early in the yeah. morning. Because I try and get to like a really early soul cycle class. I'm up at like 7. When, when do you get up? I get up at 2.30. Uh, 2.30 in the morning. So what's next? And then you ask them for their stories. Okay. Have you noticed anything changing? Ask them. Has the weather changed since oh, you were a yeah. little boy? Oh, yeah, changing the weather. Is it changing? Is it, is but it just... I think it goes through cycles. God sakes, can't get scientists see this. Do you believe that the ice is melting in the Arctic? Yeah, it is. I don't worry about that. Even when your feet are getting wet on your front lawn? No. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good just to get out of here. Thousands of years ago, you, listen, you, thousands of years ago, he had all this already planned out. And that day's a coming. Just as short as you're born, sister. The rapture. Yeah. Let me throw this out there and we'll let it land. We don't even have to discuss it. What if climate scientists <coughs> are actually doing God's work? He works through everybody. Yeah, he can work through them. Yeah. He can work through them. I, mean, I, I don't know where to get that kind of stuff. Oh my God, I think I did it. Did you guys just admit that climate change is real? No. I really, really hope something can be done to save Tangier because it's unique and beautiful and the people are lovely. Did I convince anyone here? Probably not. But did we listen to each other? Sort of. This is such a great place. It's too bad what's happened because of all the, you know, the sea level rising. Uh, the wave erosion. Sea rise. Wave erosion. The sea is, the sea level is rising. And it's the like wave really action's obvious. coming in and roaming the shoreline. Yeah, sea rise. It is a shame. Sea rise. <laughs> wave erosion. Deep in the Puerto Rican wetlands, could a guerrilla reforestation project save a community from the next hurricane? For answers, I needed to channel my inner Martin Sheen. And lucky for me, I love makeup. What are you doing? Guerrilla reforestation? Um, that's not how we do it. You should come with me. Okay. This is Luis Merero of Caras, a grassroots nonprofit that works to repopulate a federally protected wetland. When there's heavy rain, the soil acts as a giant sponge, able to absorb large amounts of water, so surrounding communities are less impacted by the floods. Louise leads classes for the next generation of environmental activists. What's the point in this exercise? Just remember that I hated grade school. <laughs> so right now the kids are planting some white mangroves. The trees that used to be here in the wetland, it means that the our water stays in the forest instead of going into neighborhoods around the wetland. Since hanging out with 12 year olds was getting like super old. Sorry, uh, can you make silence, Amy, please? I'm trying to teach here. Thank you. I decided to have a conversation with Michael. I'm very worried about the next hurricane season. It's right around the corner, so we have to plant as many trees as possible. We know it'll make a big difference in the resiliency of this community. So are you saying that the wetland did more to help Puerto Rico than the president? Absolutely. Have you ever considered becoming white supremacist? Like a way to call attention to our projects? Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's a coverage we want. We want support from that. Just not racist support. Definitely, we don't want to bring torches into the forest. It felt good, working hard to save the world by planting one tree. What do you think we should name the tree? I've always liked the name Amy. Aren't you Amy? Yeah, it's a coincidence, because it's my favourite name and it's my name. But if I have a little living monument to myself, that's just... that's just what's happened. 
Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.